Kaivora in children uh, is the terminology uh, which has been introduced by Pan and Wilberger way back in 1982 as uh, a spinal cord injury without any radiographic presentation. Uh, the children who have uh, myelopathy following spinal trauma and their radiographs, tomographs, myelographs showed no bony injury or subluxation or malalignment of vertebral column were designated as skyvora. However, this was again revisited after two decades. Uh, and uh, with the introduction of MRI, the neurological deficit on clinical examination after spinal cord injury in these children, while no abnormality was detected on MRI. Of course, those injuries which have been a penetrating injuries or electric shock injuries and obstetric complications were excluded out of it. The spinal injuries of these children, roughly around 13 to 90 percent are skyvora, while in adults about 10 to 12 percent of spinal injuries are skyvora. Carol, in 2015, in a report of 368 skyvora children, found that males predominated to 68.5 percent and the mainly the injury took place in cervical region to the extent of 87%. While it was seen rarely in th cervicothoracic region, thoracic and lumbar region. Why cervical spine is involved? It's said that cervical spine is involved in these children, younger children, because they have a large head to body ratio. They have increased ligament of laxity. There is incomplete vertebral ossification. There is increased cervical mobility and the neck muscles are relatively immature. The facets in the cervical region have a shallow angulation and ancillate process have not developed by the age of 10 years. There is a fulcrum of movement in younger children up to the age of five years at C2 and C3 level, while below 10 years, it moves to C3 and C4 level. While the cervical fulcrum of movement in older children, older than 10 years is around seven C5 and C6 region. Thoracic spine is supposed to be more stable and stiff. That is why the, these spinal cord injuries in children are rare in thoracic spine region. What is the mechanism of injury in these children? Knox had stated that children below the age of 10 years, majority of them have a motor vehicle accident. In the motor vehicle accident, the lap belt injuries tried is well known and it should be looked very carefully with a spinal cord injury having abdominal wall bruising and intra abdominal injuries. Adolescents and children between 10 to 17 years of age, the sports injuries are predominantly seen in Skyvora. What is the pathophysiology in these Skyvora patients? There's a whiplash, there are flexion extension giving rise to spinal cord traction, which results in edema and may precipitate ischemia of the cord. 30 to 40% of children with traumatic myelopathy have Skyvora. 
how do we start managing these patients? At the site of accident, the evacuation need to be done on a child specific board for immobilization. If this board is not available, then torso should be raised to roughly around two to four centimeters, leaving the head at the board level to avoid flexion of the neck as head body ratio is bigger in children. The clinical examination, as soon as the patient arrives in the casualty setup, a detailed clinical history is, should be obtained. Any associate injuries should be marked out. In a study of 297 children of Skybora, Knox reported that associated injuries with Skyboras have been head trauma, orthopedic injuries, facial injuries, thoracic injuries, and GIT injuries. As soon as this general examination is noted down, a meticulous motor and sensory neurological assessment is of utmost importance initially. And this assessment should be recorded on ASIA impairment scale. And however, the assessment need to be done periodically. Maybe first after 24 hours and then every 72 hours. The, these patients are subjected to a standard radiographs in the cervical spine, anteroposterior, lateral, and odontide views are must, while in thoracic and lumbar spine, anteroposterior and lateral views are sufficient. However, it has been stated that flexion extension views of the spine can also be obtained to assess stability, though it is not recommended in acute situation, and particularly in children, there's a lot of muscular spasm, and it may be very difficult to perform this. So these are not recommended in acute phase. If we find no abnormality on radiographs, we further perform thin CT scan sections with 3D reconstruction images. However, MRI remains a gold standard in the investigation as it demonstrates the soft tissue changes the best as compared to any other investigation. And the soft tissue changes that can be demonstrated so well are cord edema, hematomas, transaction of the cord, cord compression, disc, and ligamentous and muscular injuries. Bose and uh, Lesher we suggested two groups of patients while having done MRI. The type one, where the MRI shows no signal changes and no abnormality is found. While type two, the MRI, the signal changes are there and there are abnormalities found either in the extra neural region intraneural lesion or could be mixed combined with extra and intraneural. However, it is suggested that MRI need to be repeated after 72 hours because a delayed MRI shows a better spinal cord status reflecting onto the biological health of the cord than in the acute phase. 